What's up y'all? My name is Adam Neor and today we're going to be apparating around Denver talking about Harry Potter Wizards Unite. So we already know that Wizards Unite will be released sometime in the second half of 2018 with speculation of September 1st as kind of based on the start of term for Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Typically before Niantic releases a game, they they have a beta test just to make sure everything is in working order before it goes live. They also use this period to try to see what else they can fix. Getting chosen to be a beta tester proves to be a pretty difficult task because Niantic really wants its testers to be pretty well versed in AR games. I've really thought about it and done my research and I think there are about three major ways that can it help you improve your chances to be getting picked for the Wizards Unite's beta testing. I'm basing each of my theories off of the beta testing Niantic used for Pokemon Go and the process that they used to choose the beta testers for that. Which leads me to my first theory. Oh, So that leaves me to my first theory. Try to get registered for the beta testing for Wizards Unite within hours, if not minutes, of the registration going live. I think speed is a definite advantage for those hoping to get into the beta testing, as it shows that you're committed to Wizards Unite and Niantic, and ensure that it'll be a great game, and that everything will work as it should. However, as Niantic stated in their announcement for Pokemon Go, sign up does not guarantee access, to the field test. So that means you could do all of these things and still not get in. The registration for the Pokemon Go beta testing included your email address, the confirmation of your username, and your user level in their original game, Ingress. Which leads me to my second theory. That one was better. So number two is that you should be a high-level Ingress player. Ingress was Niantic's first child. But before we get into my second theory, let me explain what Niantic is for those of you who aren't sure. Ingress is an augmented reality game that has two teams fighting for control of the world, the Resistance and the Enlightened. There are many portals at real-world locations that need to be controlled by one of these teams. There are many portals that players can attack and make claim to them. The goal is to create links between portals that are owned by your own team. When you link three portals together, you make what's called a triangular field that makes all of the space in that field under control of your team. You can gain AP or access points or what's called experience points in Pokemon Go for doing any of these different actions such as attacking an enemy portal, hacking a portal for items, making claim to a portal by placing resonators in it, or linking portals together to form one of those fields. That's the most basic goal of the game. Now, back to my point. High level Ingress players at level 11 and above have been trusted by Niantic for creating real-world data points or their portals multiple times. These contributed to being created into Pokestops and gyms in Pokemon Go as well. However, they only needed to be at level 8 to be included in the beta testing for Pokemon Go. So it only makes sense that a high-level Ingress player will again gain the trust of Niantic and also increase your chances of becoming a beta tester for one of their new games and in this case Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Which talking about Pokemon Go brings me to my third theory. Off to another spot. That was smooth. My third theory is that you should be a high level Pokemon Go player as well. Pokemon Go's July of 2016 release was huge for Niantic. Anywhere you'd go, you'd be around seeing people hunting Pokemon, flinging Pokeballs, chasing down 
rare Pokemon, those who have stuck with the game so long after its release have probably gotten to a pretty decent level by now. Personally, I'm level 38, going on level 39 pretty quickly. But these same high-level Pokemon Go players have never had the same opportunity as high-level Ingress players to change the game. And what I mean by change the game is they've never been able to participate in Niantic's portal selection period. So my thought is that these high-level players will now be given the opportunities as the high-level Ingress players for Harry Potter Wizards Unite beta testing because it's no longer considered the baby of Niantic's platform. Saying that, I think it's a pretty good assumption that Niantic will use players who have reached the same level percentage in Pokemon Go as related to Ingress. So by taking the required AP needed to reach level 16 in Ingress, I've done the same for Pokemon Go, and the equivalent is going to reach you at level 25 for Pokemon Go. Now I think that's a pretty good starting point to be chosen for beta testing for Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Let's move. So to recap what we just went over, you're going to want to be on time for the beta testing. If my timeline serves me right, and I think it does, that would put the first round of beta testers about four months ahead of launch at the beginning of May in 2018, since Pokemon Go's beta testing was started four months ahead of that. So be sure to sign up quickly. If you've only ever played Pokemon Go or Ingress, now is the best time to start playing either one of those to try to get to a higher level so you can reach that threshold so you can be accepted into the beta testing for Harry Potter Wizards Unite. Now, I don't think doing any of these things are going to guarantee you a chance of becoming a beta tester for Harry Potter Wizards Unite, but hey, you can take a chance, right? <laughs>